Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss on Annex 1 of Marpol. I suggest you to watch this video till the end and if you want you can take down notes as well. So let's get started. A whopping 2,900 million tons of crude oil and its products are being transported across the sea every year. Annex 1 stands for Regulation for the Prevention of Pollution by Oil. Annex 1 came into force on 2nd October 1983. You don't need to remember the specific date, but just remember the year when it came into force. Oil pollution is caused either by operational causes or by accidental causes. Operational causes include the negligence of ship's crew. Operational causes include cleaning of cargo residues on oil tankers, blasting of cargo tanks, tank cleaning, as well as bilge cleaning. And oil pollution can also be caused due to accidents such as grounding or collision. Now what are the effects of oil pollution on marine environment? It blankets the surface, interfering with oxygen exchange between the sea and the atmosphere. Heavier constituents of oil blanket the seafloor, interfering with the growth of marine life. So what happens is, when oil is discharged into the sea, it creates a sheen on the surface of the sea, which blocks the oxygen and other important elements to reach the marine organisms under the sea. Many constituent elements are toxic and get into the food chain. So when the oil mixed with the seawater is consumed by organisms such as fishes, it affects the whole food chain because these smaller fishes are eaten by larger fishes or even by humans. So the whole food chain gets affected. Oil on beach interferes with the recreational uses of that beach. Now who wants to go to a beach which has oily water, right? Oil may enter seawater distilling inlets and it may be deposited on tidal mud flats with detrimental results. Oil sticks to the wings of seabirds and they become helpless casualties of oil spillage. Now what is a special area? Special area means a sea area where for recognized technical reason in relation to its oceanographic or topographic, ecological and the traffic density in that area and adoption of special mandatory methods for the prevention of sea pollution has to be carried out in that area to preserve the that particular sea area. There are different special areas for each annex of Marpol. As per annex 1, there are 10 special areas. So they are the Mediterranean Sea, the Baltic Sea, the Red Sea, Persian Gulf area, Black Sea, Gulf of Aden, Antarctic area, Northwest European water, Oman area of Arabian Sea, and southern South African waters. There are certain regulations which have to be implemented when ships are en route in these areas. Now we move on to the discharge criteria as per Annex 1. This is an important part because this is often asked in the examinations. So any kind of oil or oily mixture is prohibited to discharge into the sea unless these requirements are satisfied. So these requirements we will be discussing into two parts. Requirements for machinery spaces of all ships of 400 gross rate tonnage and above when the vessel is outside special area and when the vessel is proceeding in special area. And requirements for the cargo area for oil tankers when the vessel is proceeding outside special area and the vessel is in special area. So any kind of oil or oily mixtures cannot be discharged into the sea unless these requirements are satisfied for ships of 400 gross rate tonnage and above. So when the vessel is outside special area, it should be proceeding en route. Now en route means that the vessel is not stopped or drifting and it is proceeding on its own original route. 
oily mixture is processed through an oil filtering equipment it should be processed through a oil filtering equipment before being discharged into the sea oil content of the effluent without dilution does not exceed 15 parts per million the oil content should not exceed 15 parts per million when it is being discharged into the sea and a working alarm system and an automatic stoppage system should be set up if this exceeds 15 ppm oily mixture should not originate from cargo pump room bilges on oil tankers oily mixture in case of oil tankers is not mixed with oil cargo residues now when the ship is proceeding in special area it should be proceeding on route oily mixture should be processed through an oil filtering equipment before discharge oil content of the effluent without dilution does not exceed 15 parts per million oily mixture does not originate from cargo pump room bilges on oil tankers oily mixture in case of oil tankers is not mixed with oil cargo residues now this is somewhat the same for outside special area and in special area as well just a major difference is that in the antarctic area any discharge into the sea of oil or oily mixtures from any ship shall be prohibited so now whether it is 15 ppm 10 ppm or even below that in inside the antarctic area any discharge into the sea of oil and oily mixtures is prohibited next up moving on to the requirements for the cargo spaces of oil tankers when an oil tanker is proceeding outside a special area so it should be more than 15 nautical miles from the nearest land it should be proceeding on route the instantaneous rate of discharge of oil content does not exceed 30 liters per nautical mile so what does this mean the rate of discharge should not exceed 30 liters per nautical mile a vessel should not discharge more than 30 liters of oil or oily mixtures per nautical mile it is covering total quantity of oil discharged into the sea does not exceed 1 by 15000 of the total quantity of the cargo for ships delivered on or before 31st december 1979 and 1 by 30000 of the total quantity of cargo which is on board at that time for ships delivered after 31st december 1979 the vessel should be fitted with operational odmcs which is the oil discharge monitoring and control system and a slop tank arrangement slop tanks are generally used for holding slop generation such as tank cleaning or dirty ballast now when a vessel when a tanker is within a special area any discharge into the sea of oil or oily mixtures from the cargo area of an oil tanker shall be prohibited while in a special area it is not at all allowed to discharge any kind of oil or oily mixture when a, an oil tanker is inside a special area now moving on to the orb which is the oil record book The oil record book is basically in two parts. Part 1 is for machinery space operations. It is to be carried by oil tankers of 150 gross rate tonnage and above and every ship of 400 gross rate tonnage and above. Part 2 is for cargo and ballast operations. It is to be carried by all oil tankers of 150 gross rate tonnage and above. The oil record book shall be kept in such a place as to be readily available for inspection at all reasonable times and it shall be preserved for a period of 3 years after the date of last entry has been made this is a very important document be checked by the port state control and any other authority which is inspecting the vessel and they can check that the vessel is complying with Uh, the requirements of annex 1 so what are the entries that ha- have to be made in the oil record book blasting or cleaning of oil fuel tanks 
discharge of dirty ballast or cleaning water from oil fuel tanks collection of and disposal of residues sludge and oil residues as well discharge overboard or disposal otherwise of bilge water which has been accumulated in machinery spaces bunkering of fuel oil or bulk lubricating oil entries to be made in oil record book part 2 which is to be carried by oil tankers of 150 gross tonnage and above is loading of oil cargo internal transfer of oil cargo during the voyage between the tanks unloading of oil cargo ballasting of cargo tanks and dedicated clean ballast tanks cleaning of cargo tanks including crude oil washing discharge of ballast except from segregated ballast tanks discharge of water from slop tanks closing of all applicable valves or similar devices after slop tank discharge operations closing of valves necessary for isolation of dedicated clean ballast tanks from cargo and strip lines after slop tank discharge operations and disposal of residues such as sludge and other residues have to be recorded in the oil record book part 2 now we move on to sopep sopep is the shipboard oil pollution emergency plan every oil tanker of 150 gross rate tonnage and above and every vessel of 400 gross tonnage and above shall carry on board a shipboard oil pollution emergency plan approved by the administration so what does this plan consist of this plan consists of the procedures to report an oil pollution incident the list of authorities or persons to be contacted in event of an oil pollution incident a detailed description of actions to be taken immediately by persons on board to reduce or control the discharge of oil following the incident the procedures and point of contact on the ship for coordinating shipboard actions with national and local authorities in combating the pollution so as per annex 1 these ships need to have a sopep which is approved by the administration at and it contains important details and important procedures when an oil pollution incident takes place next is the IOPPC which is the International Oil Pollution Prevention Certificate every oil tanker of 150 gross tonnage and above and every ship of 400 gross tonnage and above shall carry on board a IOPP certificate it is issued by the administration for a validity of 5 years cannot be more than 5 years but it can be less than 5 years it is supplemented with form a for vessels other than oil tankers and form b just for oil tankers so by this we come to an end of annex 1 Please like this video, share it with your friends and do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss a new informative video from our channel.